I've put out more than a couple videos in my day, and I like to show my signal chain, my workflow, how I mix my podcast. And in almost every single one of those videos, I get a comment, a message on my Discord server, or an email asking, what the f*** is a bus channel? I can't believe I've gone this long without ever talking about them, but today I want to introduce you to an extremely powerful tool that will help your podcast sound great. All right, let's do it. What's going on, everybody? My name is Tom Kelly, and this is Clean Cut Audio. On this channel, my goal is to teach you how to make amazing sounding podcasts. Now, this is um, this is kind of a unique thing, right? This isn't where you want to start at if you're just getting into podcast production and mixing, but I think it's a very powerful tool that is available in most DAWs. I think any of them that have any kind of real-time processing capabilities, which... I think at this point is everything except Audacity. Sorry, Audacity users. Um, I, I don't think this one's for you. But anyway, let's learn about the magic of bus channels. The first thing to know is a bus channel is essentially a place for all of your other tracks to combine into one. So you'll often see like a voiceover bus a sound effects bus, a music bus. You're basically not only grouping things inside your session, but you're actually changing the routing to go first to this bus channel to all organize and condense and sum into one thing before going out to the master, which is then printed. There are a couple of reasons why we could do this. Number one is because we want to process the sum of all of these tracks. For example, you can compress vocals to make sure that nothing gets too loud at any one point. But in a lot of podcasts, people will kind of have some crosstalk. They'll talk over each other. Maybe three people at a time will all laugh. And when you have three tracks all laughing at once, an individual compressor on each track isn't going to do enough to make sure that that doesn't get all too loud. So what we can do is send all of those vocals into one bus track, put a compressor on that track, and now we're compressing the sum of these three vocals. So when the, all three laughs combine into one huge audio signal, we can compress it further to make sure we're not blasting our audience's ears. And I'll show you an example of that here in just a minute. Another reason is for like global equalization. So I'll show you in this one podcast I was working on, I thought I had the vocals dialed in pretty well, and then I felt like they were a little too present. So I just threw uh, an equalizer on my bus channel, and I rolled off some 1 to 2K to push the vocals back just a little bit, and it was easier than applying an equalizer to every track individually. And uh, I just didn't want to do that. So I threw an equalizer on the bus channel. And then the third reason, and not to say that this is the last reason, but the last one that I'll be presenting today is for any CPU intensive plugins. For example, anything in the Isotope RX restoration suite, denoise, mouth declick, I throw all of those on a single bus channel for a few reasons. These plugins are very CPU intensive, and rather than running two, three, four instances of mouth declick by putting one on each speaker's track, we can send them all to a bus channel, put one instance of mouth declick on the bus channel, and now we're treating every voice with one instance of mouth declick. The same can be said for voice denoise, any of that stuff. It's a really great way to reduce some of the CPU load by throwing plugins like that. Soothe 2 is a big one. Throw it on the bus channel, one instance, it makes the session run a whole lot smoother. Let's check out the session right here. I have a, an example of how a bus compressor is working here. So we have, uh, this is True Crime Obsessed, one of the weekly podcasts I work on. So here is Jillian's voice soloed. DNA, no forensics. You know what I'm saying? And then Patrick's voice. I mean, I say this all the time, like back before two. So each of their voices individually are compressed pretty well. But if we put them together and we get this crosstalk. 63 with no DNA, no forensics. I mean, you know I say I'm this saying? all the time, like back before two. In the middle of that handoff there, it gets like pretty loud. And even though each track is individually compressed well, by throwing bus compressor two. 
Notice bus compressor. This is literally what this was meant for in an old SSL console or even modern SSL consoles. You can send everything to this bus compressor and it's going to treat the sum of all of it. What you're going to see here is the compressor. This is our gain reduction meter here. So this is how much compression is being added to the signal. What I'm kind of going for is for it to not do a whole lot on any one individual speaker, but when both come in, it's going to reduce the signal by like three decibels or so. So it's going to give the whole like program loudness a much more even signal. 63 with no DNA, no forensics. I mean, you know I say I'm this saying? all the time, like back before 2001, if you didn't see them. So you saw it compressing the most when there was crosstalk because it's compressing the sum of both of these signals. That's perfect. That's the purpose of a bus compressor. This will make your podcast a whole lot easier to listen to. We can look at, again, I have mouth declick here. If we turn on the latency here, we can see that there's 6,216 samples of delay being added uh, through Soothe2 and mouth declick. So I don't want to put 6,000 samples of latency on every track. I don't want to mash my CP with all that. I have a 12 core processor, I think, and it still gets sluggish. You don't want to put that on every track. If you're especially working in music and you have like 30 vocal layers, you don't want 30 instances of Soothe. Put them all through a bus channel, put Soothe on the bus. Mm. Chef's kiss. It'll uh, it'll do you well. This is that EQ I was talking about. Actually, uh, 6K. Yeah, I, I backed off. I thought it was more of the, the 1 to 2K. I was backing off 6,800. Uh, I just saw in this spectral analyzer here in FabFilter Pro Q3, you've got just the tiniest bit of noise down here in like the 10, 20K. So if I wanted to throw on some voice denoise. We can clean that up a little bit with just some of the stuff bouncing around there in the very low noise floor. And we can see on the spectral analyzer, it took care of, you know, all of that noise down there. And we did it by throwing it on the bus channel rather than having to do it on each individual track. And it just helps a lot. Hey, you, did you know that I have a free PDF that shows you nearly everything you need to know about equalizing podcast vocals? You can check it out with a link in the description. And if you like what you see, I also have two courses available, the Beginner's Guide to Equalization for Podcasting, VoiceOver, and Film, and the Advanced Guide to Equalization for Podcasting, VoiceOver, and Film. You can get them both at a 20% discount if you use the coupon code YouTube, or if you click the link in the description, the coupon is already applied. I also have a couple payment plans available to make it even more affordable and even more accessible. If you have any questions about them, please feel to reach out. Personally, I think they're great courses. Many people have bought them and they seem to agree. So feel free to check it out below if you're interested in learning everything about the art and science of equalization. Another way that I'm using a bus channel here is I have all of my music sent into my music bus. And this was helpful because in all of my music, I have automation written um, just, you know, a little bit here and there. It's going up and down around the voiceover. And when you have automation written on a track, you can't just use the fader here like you normally would. A, because why do you want to cover this? Actual and the producer of the show wanted the music a little bit lower. So all of these songs are going into my music bus and I just lowered the bus by two decibels. And what that did was it kept all the automation clean, didn't have to touch anything. And it lowered both music tracks by two decibels very simply, very easily. So it's great for reducing, again, global changes on anything. We can just reduce the volume of all the music without having to go into each track individually, mess with automation. It's just a much cleaner way of doing it. I'll show another quick example here. This is a podcast I'm working on called Ted and Michael Read Sketches into Microphones. It is an amazingly hilarious sketch comedy podcast, and their sessions get pretty involved with sound design and scoring and all that kind of stuff. This one's pretty sound design heavy, so I use these routing folders in Pro Tools, and I'll cover a little bit of how to set up bus channels and routing folders and whatnot in Pro Tools, but it's really useful because there are this many tracks in the session, not a ton. It's like 15 maybe, but uh, with a shift F we can collapse everything. So if we don't want to be scrolling through all the sound effects, it's great. We can condense it. We can move things around. We can focus more on just the voiceover. It really kind of cleans up a session. If you're using these collapsible routing folders and pro tools, many other DAWs offer a similar thing. 
And probably most importantly and most useful is the fact that you can solo and mute all of the tracks in a bus just by clicking one mute button or one solo button. So if you want to listen to just the vocals, you can solo the vocals. If you want to hear the vocals and the music, you can mute the sound effects track, whatever. It makes it really, really quick and convenient to click one solo button, one mute button, rather than trying to hit all 17 or however many tracks you have within that bus. And we can take a look at something I did here in the sound effects. So there's this constant wall of football stadium kind of thing going on. There's a lot going on here, and there's a moment in the voiceover where I wanted to focus more on what the vocals were saying, which is right here. So all of this constant walla and everything else going on in here, I went into the volume automation on the bus channel, and I lightly ducked it from, uh, I went from 4.4 decibels to one and a half just to put some more focus on the vocals at this point, and it comes back up, it's all louder again, and then it all comes back down again for this other moment in the voice over here. So we can even write volume automation on the bus channels without having to like go in. I mean, it would be really difficult to go in and automate every one of these sound effects individually. It's a nightmare. So I had everything, every individual sound effect was the volume that it should be, on a whole global sound effect scale. And then when I was tying it in with the vocals, I'm kind of automating it up and down. There's like some audience roars and swells and the whole thing kind of comes up and comes back down. It, this would have been, I think, impossible without bus channels. So I really, really appreciated them, especially when working on this podcast where there's tons of sound design, different music tracks going on. Uh, some of the sketches have up to six or seven voice actors in it. And it's it's so much nicer to throw, you know, voice denoise on a, a bus channel rather than every individual track or like mouth de-click. I don't want seven instances of that running. My computer will not be able to handle it. So to review, a bus channel is where you're sending multiple individual audio sources into one place to sum them together, and then you can either process them or not as a whole. You can do global changes on there. You can do global EQ compression. It's just a really easy way to work on many sources at once. So now let's say we want to learn how to make a bus channel in Pro Tools. It's very simple. So we have these two tracks here, and let's say we want to combine them into one. Right now, what we have is each of these channels going to output one and two, which is our master. So Patrick's audio is going to the master. Jillian's is going to the master. You can kind of see that as a, a channel. I mean, it, it is a channel. It's a two-track channel. However, when we start introducing music and sound effects, we want to start separating them. That's when you want a bus channel, which is summing before the master summing at the very end. So what we're going to do here, since we don't want to be digging through menus, we're going to use our hot keys. Command shift N will bring up the new track tab. We're going to hit command and then the right button on the D pad to make a stereo track. And then we're going to hit command up twice to make a routing folder. Now we can hit tab and name this folder VO. And now we have made this folder. It changed it to VO1 because I already have one named VO. But uh, we'll drag this up top and we can uh, drag both of these tracks click and drag them into the VO folder. So now we have that collapsible kind of option here. However, if we hit play, and he goes, I'm here to work on the each, <laughs> each of those is still just going into the master channel. So we need to play with our signal flow and our routing in order to first send our vocals into the bus channel. So when we made the bus channel, it created an input for it. So it is input VO 1.2. Again, I already have multiple VO channels on this. I just hit a bunch of tracks here. So it auto named it to what we named and then it added a suffix, whatever. So this channel is receiving the bus VO 1.2. So we can go in here and uh, dragging both tracks and hitting shift option we can head down to bus 
and we're going to go all the way down. Yours probably will not look like this. I have made a lot of bus channels in my life, and I haven't cleaned up any of my sessions since. And we can see VO 1.2, and it is actually yellowed out to let us know that there is a track ready to accept that signal in this session. So we're going to click on it. And now what it did is it changed the output of these tracks to VO 1.2, which is the input of this one. So now if we hit play, we can see the meters right here. Enactment, and he goes, I'm here to work on the apartment. And I'm it, go <laughs> it goes from uh, Jillian's track into the bus channel and then into the master. So that's great. We can start loading up, you know, if we need another bus compressor. I've got a few compressors to pick from. I like the SSL native bus compressor too. And now this is compressing the sum of both these signals. Language. So when Anna's son gets her, the scene is so that's how we do it in Pro Tools. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you now understand how powerful bus channels are. I strongly encourage you to play with them on whichever DAW you have. You do not need Pro Tools in order to do a bus channel. You can even do it on physical hardware. I mean, if you have like a, an eight channel mixer, I'm sure it has a bus channel on there somewhere. I encourage you to play with it and to figure out how you can really use it to make your podcast sound better. If you ever have people talking over each other on a podcast, which is almost all the time, it seems like these days, throw a bus compressor on there, have it be tamed a little bit on the bus channel before going out to the master fader. And if you find that your CPU is constantly bogged down from instances of Soothe 2 or mouth declick or de-reverb or denoise, take them all off the individual tracks and then send it to the bus channel. I think it'll, it'll really help you out if you're struggling with CPU usage. I know I always am. If you like the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And if any of your friends out there have a lifelong dream of learning what a bus channel is and how to use it, please send this video along to them. It helps the channel grow and I appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.